welcome back to our Ask the Agronomist video series. I am Phil Long, Precision Agronomy Advisor with Latham High Tech Seeds, and this week we're going to be talking about uh, an interesting topic. Um, why are combines uh, that should be green or red maybe are turning more a black color? Uh, so definitely related to corn harvest, obviously. We're standing here in the middle of the cornfield uh, on an absolutely beautiful day. Uh, perfect temperatures and, and wind and uh, just everything we like to see when it comes to corn harvest uh, and, and things are going really well it sounds like out in Latham country on, on the corn side and the soybean side pleasantly surprised with a lot of the yields that we're seeing for sure uh, coming out of such a tough year in a lot of areas uh, really seeing some 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 really stellar yields uh, despite the conditions that we faced some late season rains probably helped a lot of that um, but it's amazing really what our, our modern genetics can do uh, to finish filling the seed. Last week we talked on the corn side about uh, stock quality uh, and, and how we finished the season somewhat tough in terms of, of dry conditions and moisture really uh, caused that plant to give up and probably zap more out of the lower stock than what we wanted. And this week we're going to continue uh, on the uh, degrading uh, corn topic, I guess if you will, of uh, what is known as sooty molds or if you're noticing it in your cornfields as you're harvesting you're seeing black dust uh, huge plumes of, of black and brown around the combine and seeing it cover the corn head and the side of the combine seeing a lot of those out there um, this this sooty mold as it's known as or a saprophytic fungi uh, and and what this is is it it is on this corn plant that i have in front of me we'll put up some better pictures as well um, it's fairly easy to see in a cornfield. If you're looking out at the corn, you see that nice golden uh, hue. Uh, then you walk up closer to it and you can see like on this one on the husk, um, it's got a dark black appearance on that and some of the leaf sheaths and so forth have a uh, dark appearance. And, and that's that saprophytic fungi. And, and really what it is, is a, it's an opportunistic fungi. It's a good thing, it's natural. Um, it comes in usually once the plants the nest and start to die and decay and it's there to break it down. That's what we want it to do. It helps us out in the fall and the spring, um, really breaking some of that residue down, releasing uh, nutrients and so forth. So it's a good thing that's, that's happening. It's just happening a little early. Uh, and this, this also occurred in, in 2012. So when we have these dry years, the, the corn senesces early uh, and we end up with issues like this because the corn's given up, it's, it's done. Obviously we're hearing reports of corn coming out at 14, even 12% moisture, um, which is crazy. So the corn is really dry um, and, and really just spent in all, in all terms. So it's, it's coming in to take over and start breaking that plant down. So. Um, some of the things that we need to watch out for, um, number one, with the, as a human risk, would be um, the, the respiratory issues. If you have respiratory issues or know somebody that does that's helping you um, harvest, uh, you need to be cautious of that. You need to keep them in a tractor. A lot of modern machinery has good cab filters on it and so forth. Also cleaning those out, air filters and cab filters. These fungi produce millions and millions of spores so there's going to be lots of that plume of dust that you see when you start the combine up or as you're finishing and turning on the, the headlands um, that's that's the spores coming off of these corn plants so there's lots of it in the air uh, you want to be careful about breathing that and standing out too long if you don't need to um, that would be definitely a caution you'd want to take so the other thing is um, it's going to be a little bit of a, a headache for those that are trying to feed corn stalks and we're going to talk about that uh, a little bit here too as well but uh, uh, some of the other good things I guess I want to talk about before we get to that um, is the, the quality wise so if you look at this plant and any plant that you're seeing some of that that saprophytic fungi on uh, you can open up the ear itself and see that uh, this the corn itself is, and as it goes in the grain tank is going to look just fine the quality on it is likely just fine however uh, if it has this going on, and a lot of times I've seen it worse in, in downed areas or like this one, smaller eared, uh, smaller plants uh, that, that took it worse, that, that died even more prematurely than the rest of the field, uh, is going to have it worse. And, and what you want to check after that is the stalks. So if we have this kind of mold, the good news is 
uh, this mold, this fungus does not produce uh, mycotoxins that can cause issues uh, with feeding this to cattle and so forth and other animals. But if it's got that on it, it likely has uh, something else going on. So this one has a pretty good stock. If you peel the leaf back, uh, you can see it, it does still have a pretty healthy stock to it. Uh, but that uh, and what's on the ear should be the first thing that you check after that because uh, likely there are some other diseases that are attacking the plant and there could be uh, things that could produce mycotoxins. Typically are white uh, mold, uh, pink molds as well like Fusarium, Gibberella, the pink mold uh, can, can cause some of that. So we want to be cautious about just saying, oh, it's okay, it's just a, a saprophytic fungi, we're fine. Um, there are some cautions that we need to take. So, having said that, some of the things that we need to look out for um, when it comes to feeding stocks is going to be, uh, obviously, you got the decision to make whether you're going to bale it up, uh, graze the stocks, or so forth. So, making that decision, if you can, if you can look at the particular field, if there's one better than the other, or if one had a fungicide or something that maybe was healthy later, you know, those stocks uh, and, and leaves and everything on the plant is going to be in much better shape. Uh, than a field that maybe didn't um, and senesced even earlier. Uh, so take that into consideration. Select the best fields that you can to, to keep those stocks or to graze those stocks off of because you're going to have much lower palatability. Uh, the, the animals are going to be, you know, it's not going to be as good of, of, of feed for them. Uh, they're going to, you know, selectively graze it, obviously. Uh, it's not going to be as valuable. The other thing uh, with, with baling it up is, is likely it's, it's a challenge to keep the bales dry typically uh, compared to like hay which seals itself off a little bit better so if you can and you're baling it up and it does have some of this on it and you know there's quite a bit then it might be good to uh, consider uh, putting it under or, or covering it if you can before feeding it feeding it early you know things like that um, are obviously good considerations as well the other thing that you want to take into consideration if you can uh, if if you have pregnant animals or so forth, uh, the best idea would probably be to keep them off those fields or to not feed them that, uh, just in case that there is my, the, the, you know, the fear of mycotoxins in there. Um, obviously, you can have it tested um, and make sure, um, you know, take a good sample. But the other thing I'd caution as well, if you're feeding and, and, and bailing it up, if you're going to take a test, um, another good test to take would be a nitrate test because obviously these plants were stressed. Uh, uh, for moisture and with moisture stress there's going to be stress on getting nitrogen up into the plant um, which is why we typically worry about nitrate accumulation and any uh, corn sorghums uh, anything like that uh, the lower stock and so forth so a nitrate uh, test to see how high those are is also a good idea so just keeping all these things in mind um, you know like I mentioned there's probably other molds uh, out there in the field so if you're considering baling or, or grazing or something like that you want to keep that in mind uh, you know one other thing you could do is is feed them or, or keep them from eating so much you know put them on hay first and then before you send them out you know get them so they don't eat quite as much of it if you're if you're grazing it or something and then limit the grazing time so uh, there's just a lot of a lot of things you know it's tough to know for sure like I mentioned whether it has uh, mycotoxins in it. Uh, we don't want to assume it doesn't, but uh, this particular fun fungus, uh, if you're just harvesting the corn and, and the grain itself, is other than the respiratory issues, is, is uh, not a huge concern if you stay in the cab uh, and stay out of those, those big plumes of spores. Uh, but if you are considering uh, baling or grazing stalks this fall, uh, you really want to be selective on the field that you're looking at. Uh, the stalks that are out there, take a look at them before you, you harvest it so you have a good idea of what's going on out there in the field. So, as always, as we continue on through harvest, uh, feel free to reach out and ask us questions. We've got uh, some on staff that are very knowledgeable in this, especially our forage specialist, Corey Cat. Um, so we can uh, direct you in the right, right uh, direction to get the answers that you need uh, for, for what your operation goals are. So. Just as a, as a wrap up, you know, things are obviously going well here uh, in, in harvest and we just hope that everybody continues to stay safe uh, and, and reach out with any questions on any of our social media platforms. We always welcome those and, and look forward to helping you uh, down the road as well. So thanks and we'll see you next week.